Hey guys, I'm dressed really nicely today and that's because I'm in the closet of a singer-songwriter, entrepreneur and fashion guru, Ming Bridges. Hello, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Ming. <laughs> Okay, Ming, so being in the spotlight since a very young age, you know, being really talented and um, now you're an entrepreneur and now being in the fashion industry, I'm sure many, many girls look to you. How do you think the world sees you? It's interesting because, I mean, of course, you, you can't really be sure about how I feel the world sees me and from the feedback I get from my Instagram, it's as a hard-working person, someone who's done a lot of things, which is great, but obviously I also have this like love-hate relationship with the public eye almost because like what if I post on Instagram becomes what people see me as. So of course you're posting the showreel, the highlights of like your best accomplishments and things like that. But something I'm always conscious of is I always want to make sure that people see an image of me that can be inspiring. So I always try and show like my struggles as well. Although I'm doing hard work and achieving things, you know, it also takes struggle, it takes perseverance and such. So I think, yeah, people see me as a hardworking person, hopefully a kind person as well. I try and take a lot of time to help people. I think I definitely <laughs> see that. I mean, as an outsider, I think she's really hardworking. She cleans her own store and she's here early in the morning before anyone else is. Uh, she's the last person uh, off work and she's still doing so many videos and uh, your music stuff and all <laughs> that. So, but how do you then see yourself? Okay, so this one I'm sure many people can relate to. When you see yourself, you always see yourself as a work in progress, someone who's trying their hardest to always get better. One thing I try is to remind myself that I'm always doing the best I can and not to be so hard on myself um, and to remember all the achievements I've done as well as look forward to what I can still do. So for me, it's a struggle of saying I am good enough, I can still do more, but to be content with where I am. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that kind of answers that uh, work in progress kind of, yeah. And, and growing up in the spotlight, uh, do you feel that there are any challenges growing up and what are some of those challenges? So growing up in the spotlight, um, my main challenge actually was bullying and judgement from other people. So when I first, um, so my history is I first rose to fame by winning a singing competition called Teenage Icon and when I won that, it was incredible. It was something that I didn't even think was going to happen. But immediately I got hit with a lot of backlash. I got a lot of internet abuse as well as abuse from or bullying from my own peers at school. And it was a massive shock because I was so happy and excited. Obviously, I'd done something that I was really proud of to then think, well, oh, maybe I shouldn't be proud of this because everyone seems to hate me for doing something that I love. So I think one of my main challenges was overcoming that judgement from others and to remind myself that if I'm doing something that I'm passionate about and as long as my true friends and family love me and I know that I'm a good person still because of them, I shouldn't fear outside judgement. Which is a hard thing and I think a lot of people can relate to that because whenever you put yourself, whenever you put yourself out there or to try and do something that is beyond yourself, mm. um, whether to help people create your own brand, um, doing something outside your comfort zone, it's normally always going to be met by criticism from people who don't need to change, people who are fearful that you're going to do something more than what they thought you were. Um, it is a hard thing to just remind yourself that you can change without harming other people and it's not you, it's them. Yeah, yeah that was something that was hard for me to deal with. But you just won like a teenage contest and then you're beautiful, you're so talented. Why would they bully you? I don't know. I think it took me a long time to realise that some people, especially when you're young, I was yeah. only 14 when that happened, 13 actually, some people feel, I hate saying it, maybe they feel jealous or they feel again a fear of losing someone they knew. Mm -hmm. um, but at, at that age, of course, I didn't think that. I thought, oh my gosh, I must be a horrible person, I'm a fame-hungry monster, I can't sing, all this stuff. Um, and it definitely pushed a boundary between me and um, people that I thought were my friends. Um, and it's something that I've kind of hold, hold, hold with me now as well. I definitely see help for reminding myself that I am a good person and I'm someone who's worthy of friends just because when I was younger, I, I constantly feared making friends and having people change their mind about me. Okay. You know, it was, it was difficult, but um, yeah, I'd say that was the biggest challenge. Just reminding myself that because I'm someone who's really ambitious and I always wanted to do more things, I had to tell myself like, it's okay to do it. It's okay to grow, it's okay to do that. Don't let people hold you back because you're scared of what they think of you. Yeah. And I see a lot um, of how you are such a strong advocate for healthy eating, for eating disorders. Um, 
for a positive body self image, right? Um, that must have been a, a, a difficult period for you, for you to be such a strong advocate at this point in time. Am I right to say that? Yes. So, um, and yeah, I mean, you, you know my story. It was a very difficult uh, period for me, especially because for a long time I placed my self worth on how I looked and being in the entertainment industry, it's a thing that many of us have to go through where we feel like, well, if we're not thin enough, if we're not pretty enough, we're not going to get that many jobs. And still, even today, I get people who tell me like, oh, well, to be honest, Ming, you did look prettier when you were anorexic. Like, so what are you going to do about it? And, and it's one of those things that you just have to be honest with yourself and say, okay, look, if I looked like a Victoria's Secret model, maybe I would get more jobs, maybe I'd be more famous, but that's just not a reality for me. And I'd rather be happy than spend my entire life trying miserably and failing yeah. to be something I'm not. So one thing I try and um, promote to people nowadays is, I like to, I like to call it body neutral, yeah. because I know a lot of people also get offended when I tell them, oh, I love my body, and everyone's like, well, you look pretty. So of course it's easy for you to say that, but you know, you can still be the most, you could be the most beautiful girl in the world. You could have the most industry desired body and still hate yourself and feel like you're ugly. Um, it's more, neutralizing your body and your image to tell yourself that you know this is my body and that's that's it you know there's no extra meaning to it there's no good or bad body it's it's just saying that this is it and I'm just gonna get on with life which is difficult especially if you are in the inter entertainment industry so I've had people who are air hostesses and they've told me you know at this weight I can't work what do I do I want my job and it's one of those things I have to say, look, if that's what your job tells you to do, you have to pick between if you want to be happy or reminding yourself that this, your body doesn't, doesn't equal your self-worth. This is just what they want for the job. It doesn't mean anything to you. Because that was something that I really struggled with. I felt like, well, I have to be skinny and pretty for my job. So if I'm not skinny and pretty, I'm worthless. Where it's like, no, no, no. This is me as a product and this is me as a person. Product me has to look a certain way, but that doesn't mean that my value as a person goes down, which is a difficult thing to um, get my head around. So it's nice that I've taken kind of step back from that to do Rentadella, my fashion business, where I can remind myself that, you know, my business can do well if I work really hard, but even if I have a bad bum, it doesn't mean I'm worthless. You know what I mean? Because it's more separated, my product and me are separated. Whereas with the entertainment industry, because I was the product, yes. it was very, hard to tell myself that, okay, you're having a, a fat month and people don't want to hire you, yeah. you're still worthy, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't change things. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely something that I, I spend a lot of time talking to girls about because nowadays, even when people don't have jobs in the entertainment industry, because of social media and likes, people think, well, I have to be pretty and skinny and have a big butt, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, to, to get the likes and that's going to make me popular. So it's just reminding people that, first of all, no one really looks like they do on Instagram. It's like a highlight <laughs> reel and people now use Photoshop and all this Facetune stuff. Um, and second of all, why? Why are, we, why are we so obsessed with this and why are we letting likes equal our work? But yeah, it's difficult. It's a daily battle for me. So it's something that reminding other people about helps remind myself as well. I think it's great what she said about being um, body neutral because uh, it's true. There are people who also uh, positive shame you whereby you said, yeah, sure, you are very happy and, and you say you are happy because you look good. Yeah, you exactly. Know? But it's true. But then again, to yourself, at, at some point of time, sometimes you feel that I'm really crappy. You know, and, and different people have different standards and different levels of what is beautiful and what is, what is good, what is bad. And, and I think it's very important to sort of take away all that connotations to just be neutral. 100%. I think that's, that's uh, something that's really valuable that we learned today. Um, so just one more question before I go into uh, Rentadella. I, you know, I think there are a lot of girls out there also, like you are saying, that they face issues like that. Um, what do you have to say to them or advise them uh, about girls who say, no, I want to be thin, I want to be like what uh, the Instagrammers are, the celebrities are, I want to be thin with, you know, big boobs. What, what do you have to say to them? Okay, so for me, I think the number one thing is to address why. Why do you want to be like that? Because a lot of people say, oh, because... Uh, and then they actually don't have an answer because they want to attract boys, they want to get ahead of their career. But then it's, it's kind of like, first of all, do you want to meet someone who only likes you for a body that isn't even yours, that you have to be miserable to try and get? And second of all, do you really want a career where you're trying to do something that is unattainable for you? If you're born, I don't know, five foot 
it's unrealistic to think you can suddenly become five foot five. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're born of a certain body type, it's unrealistic to think that you can be another body type. And the problem is a lot of like social media and celebrities almost trick us into thinking that we can. You know, they sell us products saying if you do X, Y, Z, you can you can become this and, and it brainwashes us. So it's almost like we have to de-brainwash ourselves to realizing what is real and what's fake. I lived in this Instagram world where I was constantly looking at bikini models and that made me feel like I should be a bikini model. But it took me deleting all those profiles that made me feel like crap and looking around and thinking, where are these bikini models? Like they don't, it's not real life, right? <laughs> You look around, you see all these normal people, and it, my advice would be to kind of de-brainwash yourself, change your surroundings, and realize that it's not normal. And when you do that, you know, it, you'll start to get a new pers perspective on life. I think that's the number one thing, changing your perspective. Because when you live on your phone and you live in magazines and movies, you start to think that's how you should be like. But if you take a look around, no one really looks like that. Even celebrities in real life don't look, look like that. So. It's just by doing that and changing yeah. your perspective on what's important, you'll you'll be like, oh wait, I don't I don't have to look like that to to accomplish things in life. I can do things that can make me really happy without doing that. And and the main thing I'd say is, if you try and chase this unrealistic expectation, you will never be happy. I spent five years trying to be skinny and thin and what I thought that social media wanted me to be like, and I was the most miserable I'd ever been. It took me getting to my highest weight and being my most unsocial media acceptable <laughs> to finally realize that you know people love me for who I was and I could do things that made me happy without starving myself and make, my, make myself feel crap and that was the biggest and best realization of my life I could be a normal girl and be happy um, and not feel pressures to do something that we shouldn't even feel pressured for if anything we put the pressure on ourselves because we have this belief that it's gonna make us happy and the thing is that's what magazines sell us they tell us that you know we take uh, XYZ and we look like the Kardashian and that's gonna make us happy and then we try and we fail and we just get even more miserable yeah. so yeah I'd say find things that make you happy and change your perspective <laughs> what made you start Rentadella is it because of um, just wanting to get out that whole social media thing and uh, to start a business of your own uh, for your own self-identity what, what actually made you start Rentadella yeah, I think it's a bit of both of those. I have been singing since I was 13 till about 24. And I'd gone through a stage where I was too big to sing. And then I finally lost weight again. and was allowed to sing, but I told myself, you know, I need a break from having my identity be how I look like and to realizing happiness without it. So I've always wanted to have a sustainable fashion business ever since I was probably 10 years old. I had done this whole uh, plan for a website where people could swap and rent and buy secondhand clothes from each other. But I never did it because of my singing. And I started seeing this trend pop up in the States, in um, Australia, and I felt so jealous because I was like, that's what I wanted to do my whole life. So I, overnight, I decided to start Rentadella because I wanted a business where I could work hard and it'd be nothing about how I looked, but be on how I ran the business and how I learned things as I went. I mean, I've been singing my whole life. I had no idea how to run a business. Um, and starting it was amazing because I found from spending my whole life previously caring about how I looked, I was now spending my life helping other women feel beautiful. Mm. People come into the store and I'd immediately be assisting them to find something that made them feel pretty, made them feel like they'd walked out of a runway show. And when women tell me like, oh, I haven't felt this dressed up in forever, you made me feel so confident for my event, it makes me feel so happy. Um, so it was really the thing I needed at the time and it, still today it's something that I wake up from bed excited about because I have a purpose beyond myself. So yeah, I think it's very meaningful. I mean, uh, we see this beautiful shop and we, as a consumer, you see, oh, it's just, you know, a rental shop. Yes, I mean, um, one of the few pioneers in Singapore. Uh, she's got lots of stuff, but I never ever knew the, the rationale behind, which is actually your, your need to want to actually help others to look beautiful. And I think that is what's um, so essential and so, it's just so human, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, has a human touch. What are your plans for Rentadella? So my plans for Rentadella, I mean, I'm still growing and I'm still learning every step of the way um, how to run a business almost. I mean, I'm so happy and surprised to be where I am today. Um, my plans for Rentadella is definitely to keep growing, try and access new markets. What we do here is I try and 
um, cater to customers from size UK 2 to UK 22 at the moment. I'd love to grow that so that more women can feel included. And I'd also love to be able to expand overseas. I've had a lot of people asking for us in Europe and asking for us in Australia, which is really, really exciting and also a great confidence booster for me. Um, so I'm definitely looking to explore that and yeah, just see how things go. So what are the difference and challenges between an entrepreneur and being a singer-songwriter? So it's a difficult one because um, being an entrepreneur has been one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life, but also being a singer is also one of the most <laughs> difficult things I've ever done. Um, I think the difference is with singing, it was very emotionally draining as well as um, hard work because after I do things, I have to be the fear of judgment, the fear of you know people commenting bad things. What if people didn't like my songs? What if people didn't like this? It was always like, what if I'm people don't like it? And it, it matters because if people didn't like your music, that's that's what everything is based upon, right? So it was constantly hoping that I'd be good enough for people. Whereas with Rentadella, the hard work is about starting a business. I had no idea what I was doing when I started, and I I would cry all the time and just hope that I could do it. But the difference with the hard work of Rentadella is that I was so excited. So even though I wake up and, and be scared, it was like an exciting scared. I would cry, but I really enjoyed the struggle of it. And I think that'd be the main difference, enjoying the struggle. So a lot of the struggle with singing, I did, I did not enjoy um, because it was a fear of really being scared of people not liking me. Whereas the fear for Rentadella is what if I can't do it? But it was also an exciting fear of like, well, what if I can do it? Like, what's gonna happen? I have no idea, this is completely new to me. And I think when you have so much passion for something, like if you have a, a purpose behind it, like my purpose was to make other people feel beautiful, that fear is kind of lessened and the hard work becomes, it comes bearable because it's, it's hard work for, some, for a bigger purpose than yourself. So I'd wake up scared and tired, but like raring to go because I was like, I have a purpose, I have a mission. Um, I'm doing this for something greater than myself. Whereas with singing, sometimes it felt like, well, I was doing it for myself yeah. because it's me, you know what I mean? So it's a completely different, um, a different type of work, yeah. I think it's amazing how you've grown and um, it's only when you look back on the years and you realize that, you know, things are so different. But going back into the day to day, right? Um, I see on Instagram you are like making your breakfast smoothies, and you're coming to work, and you're vacuuming the whole shop. Is there a daily ritual that you do every single day? So I'd love to say there is, uh, but there is a daily ritual I try to do. So every morning I wake up, the first thing I do is I make my bed, and that for me is my my not even like a favorite thing, it's like my mandatory thing I have to do. Because for me, I feel like no matter what I did that day, at least I made the bed. Okay. <laughs> I did my, I start my day strong, you know what I mean? Okay. So I make my bed yeah. and then I try and do an activity before I, before I touch my phone. So I try and do some yoga, or I try and meditate, I try and go on a walk. Um, if I have time, I'll do like a, a workout class. Um, I try and do one thing and then I'll have my breakfast smoothie which is like a protein shake. It's normally either banana or blueberries, um, almond milk, almond butter, um, and then I add some toppings, whatever I feel like. And, and it's a great start to my day. I feel like I've eaten something healthy. And then after that, I can get on with work. And then at the end of the day, I try and wind down by either reading or I try and like, I watch a Netflix show or something just to like try and shut my brain off. Because what I used to do, so previously before I had the store, I was working out of my own living room. And when I did that, it would be like, wake up, straight to work, whoa, whoa, whoa work, fall asleep, okay, go to bed, and then sleep. And it'll be repeat. So now I try and have like a wind down thing where, you know, I put my phone away, try and read a little bit so I can go to bed with a calm mind to start the day the next day. But one thing I really do like to do as well is now I'm making lists in the evening for my next day so that I have a clear kind of like to-do list of what has to be done. It helps focus me a bit because if not, you know, it's like, I need to do this, I need to do this. Oh, emergency email, I need to do this. So at least it has like a little criteria for myself. Thank you, Ming. I think um, you've been very inspiring. Honestly, I, I learned so much things from you. And also, thank you for all your useful tips, you know, like <laughs> what to do in the morning, uh, to do your bed. That's yeah. at least one thing you've done. So if you think you've had a crappy day, at least you've made your bed. And it really works. Yeah, and I think the list uh, the night before helps as well. So thank you very much. I think uh, we really, really, really learned a lot from you. Hope to see you, more of you. Yep, sounds yes. good. <laughs>